Okay, what we're going to be looking at today is a 3-star on an anti-3-star base. Um, this is known as an interest anti-3-star base because it's a dragonflower style base. So what it does is that you have several compartments in the event that they hit you with go wipe or go wee wee. You have a very good centralized uh, units that have several layers of walls around them, uh, tanking them, um, making sure that they wouldn't go through it. And then also to defend against hogs, for example, on Gova Go Go Ho, you have uh, double spaces for uh, spaces for double giant bombs here, here on this compartment. You can have them right here in the corner as a surprise, uh, right there, right here, all in this area where the queen is, and then right here, and then of course you can also have it in the center. Because of that, if someone was to hit go ho, you would have to do it after the base has already been hit. But because no one had hit this base before, Tug had um to had the idea of using uh Queen Walk Go Ho. Also notice that the Clan Castle is now lurable, easily lurable. I guess if you launch one hog from this side right here, we'll go to this archer tower and uh it really wouldn't be targeted by any other defense other than this other archer tower. So if it's a single unit, yes, you can lure it because the hog is going to make its way all the way over here and it notices that it's going to be significant enough to where one hog can then trigger that um, clan castle. But what if there is no lava in the clan castle? What if it's a bunch of archers with uh, anything else? One hog is not going to be sufficient. And one giant, it's not going to make its way past this archer tower because you have that, uh, this cannon, and then this other archer tower hitting it. So that giant is not going to stay alive for very long. So is it um, right now, do you need to lure the clan castle? Well, not, not really if you are able to funnel your troops and the right clan castle troops are here. So um, noticing the base, notice that there is no real air defenses defending uh, these buildings right here. So the way very, the way Tuck, Tuck and Roll does it, um, the attackers, Tuck and Roll, one of our co's here at the, the Make Out Tree Clan, is that he is going to start with this queen right here so that this archer tower automatically locks onto the queen and then uses minions to make sure the queen only moves forward and then to the left as opposed to move in here and then around this area because this is where he is going to funnel his, his kill squad. If there are no buildings around it and he sends the Valks, the Valks are going to come in here, jump in here and then jump into the middle and that's what you want because you want this king dead, activate those double giant bombs, and then eventually come around and kill that queen. So that all of these other defenses are really no match for hogs. So let's go ahead and hit play. And before the raid begins, let's look at his troops. He has two archers, four wizards, four healers. 5 minions, 16 hogs, and 7 valkyries. On his clan castle, he has 1 golem. 1 golem for 1 max town hall 9 base. Max minus the walls, but if you notice, those walls are no joke. You're talking about Lego walls. So, and his king is only um, level 11, so it's just 1 upgrade from town hall 8. And then he has a level 16 queen. So a level 16 queen with um, healers, it's very powerful. 
So another thing that I wanted to point out is his spell composition. You're looking at two jumps. Why two jumps? Because he's going to need to jump this right here and then into the middle and this other compartment. And then a rage because you want to be able to get those Valkyries on the rage and make sure those X bows go down very quickly and one heal. Okay. And why is the one heal? The one heal he's going to use for the hogs because once the bugs come in and take out those X bows, those hogs have a very good chance of surviving with just one heal. So let's go ahead and look at his replay. And so as I mentioned earlier, he starts with the queen, plays very strategically. That archer tower automatically starts targeting the queen and those minions are now able to go to work. They're going to create the funnel for the Valkyries and the minions only take uh, two spaces as opposed to I normally use wizards to create a funnel but wizards take four spaces so if I use six that's 24 spaces if I use eight that's 32 spaces and he used three minions which is only six spaces so that was very smart on his part now the funnel has been created those minions are going to die, but they did their job, so it doesn't matter. Now the golem comes in, the king comes in, and one wizard to make sure those Valks keep moving forward. So once he places the jump spell, once he places the jump spell, you have the king moving in, uh, moving in, and then the Valks jump, and then the lava hound comes out and targets the golem. And to give you a perspective, a Lava Hound takes about one minute to kill a Golem. I'm sorry, to kill a Giant. And so uh, the Lava itself uh, hitting the Golem, it's not going to make very much damage. But one thing I wanted to notice is the minute that X-Bow went down, the Hog Riders st started moving in at the bottom. Because then you have all these troops tanking for them, and then all you really have to worry about is the bombs. But you have a heal spell. So you have to make sure that you, one, you don't deploy all your hogs at once. Notice that uh, he deployed several of them on different defenses. And he still has five hogs and two wizards. That's going to be key for a tree star. If you... If he was to deploy all his hogs and all his wizards, that's probably going to end up a very high percentage 2-star. But you are going for a 3-star, which means you have to account for every one of your troops. And notice that the lava is still alive. And the lava is still alive because there was only one or two wizards targeting it. And you want to keep it as long as possible alive because once it pops is going to make serious damage to your kill squad. So, and you don't want it to pop until both of the Xbox are, are taken down, the queen is taken down, the king is taken down, and then the hogs can have a fighting chance for a three star. So moving on here, he's going to place the heal a spell right there because there's most likely the double, there was the second bomb right there. And now the lava uh, is about to pop. The queen is making the way in to the side. Why is it hitting the wall? I don't know, but it's not going to matter. So he completely deploys the hogs and the other uh, wizards. And then the lava pops. Notice that as soon as the lava pop, all his kill squad went down. And they're starting moving towards the hogs. And because they started moving towards the hogs, the hogs are going to die because lava pups are very dangerous. Um, not the lava itself, but the pups are very dangerous. And then you have a golem. The golem is going to save his raid because they're going to target the golem. And the golem, as you know, is a tanking troop, so it's going to be alright. Eventually, those pups made their way over to where the queen is, but the, there's, there are no match for the queen and then the wizards and the minion that he had left along with one archer are cleaning up. And it doesn't matter. That golem is dying, but it's going to live long enough for this three star. Now, once that golem dies, it's not going to matter because the wizards 
made all the damage and you don't need to worry about those pups. It's still going to turn into a three star. And so that's how you um, that's how you break down a base. And if you want to look at this base, it's a completely maxed out base. But because it is a very good strategy in terms of deployment and accounting for every one of those troops, six uh, spaces for uh, creating a funnel, um, two spaces for backup for the Valks and the uh, King and the Golem, because you're accounting for every one of those spaces and you know exactly what troops to use for each one, then you significantly break down that base so that you don't face two expos at once or a single expo on the hogs or so that the hogs are free to uh, go through the entire base on their own without dying. And one of the things that I wanted to see here is the fact that uh, Kang Pao was the guy that uh, tuck and roll three star. He is a co-leader as well, and but he's a level 126 and his troops, his uh, troops are, are very nice, but his uh, heroes are level 30 combined. And so that's a very good job on Tuck, and I hope to see more attacks like this from him in the future.